the the law that we can use to describe and classify stars is the Stefan Boltzmann law. And so this is the the equation that allows us to calculate the luminosity of a star based on its surface area and its surface temperature. Surface area being 4 pi r squared. Um, so 4 pi is going to be the same for any star. We're assuming every star is a sphere. Um, and then uh, surface temperature. This sigma right here is a constant uh, that basically says we can work in SI units. So the luminosity for a star can be calculated in joules per second and um, we can put the radius of the star in meters and the surface temperature in kelvins and we can calculate what the the output, the watts or the joules per second would be for that star. Now there's another set of units astronomers like to work in because it's a lot easier. Um, we work in units of, of the sun. So a single solar radius, um, we just call the, this R with this circle dot subscript, um, and a single solar surface temperature, um, when we run those through this abbreviated version of the Stefan Boltzmann law, we get one solar luminosity. So you have two sliders at the bottom of this. And what this allows you to explore is what happens if you change the radius of a star while keeping the surface temperature constant. So if I effectively double the radius, I'm going to be approximate here because the sliders only uh, give you certain values you can work with. So effectively, almost doubling the radius um, would be, if this were two, then this would be four times the original luminosity. Um, but we can play around. If we made a radius a um, hundred times greater, then the luminosity would actually be 10,000 times greater. If the radius were 100 times smaller, the luminosity would be 10,000 times smaller. And again, this is assuming that we're keeping the surface temperature the same. Let's bring this back to a single solar radius. And then if I were to keep the star the same size, would change the surface temperature. And notice we're not playing with temperature here, we're looking at spectral type. But again, spectral type is a synonym for for surface temperature. So if I were to lower the surface temperature to approximately half of a solar surface temperature, what I'm going to get actually is only about a 20th, you know, five out of a hundred um, of the, the output luminosity. Conversely, if I double the surface temperature, I'm going to Again, it's that rule of um, t to the fourth. If this were exactly two, then this would be 16 times. So I should say if this were exactly uh, 0.5 of my original solar surface temperature, this is a 16th of my original uh, luminosity. So the change in surface temperature has a far bigger effect. So one thing that we can explore Let's say I had a really cool star. In order to make up for that um, lower luminosity, and I wanted to make a, an equivalent star to the sun, if if the surface temperature was very cool, less than half the surface temperature of the sun, the stellar radius would have to be over six times the size of our own sun to shine with the same overall brightness. Conversely, if I have a star that is um, shining with maybe two times uh, the surface temperature, then the stellar radius would actually have to be pretty small to bring the luminosity back to um, something that's approximately one solar luminosity. So again, this is all rooted in the Stefan Boltzmann law. And again, we don't use the SI units. We like to work in the solar units because astronomers, I guess we're kind of lazy, um, but it's just simpler. It's easier to make a comparison rather than thinking about powers of 10. We're making comparisons to the star that we know best and that's our own sun.